Thank you so much for joining us for this broadcast. We're so delighted that you took the time to join us. Sit back, relax. We want to see what God has in store for you. God bless you as you listen. Unity is not going to be instantaneous. It is going to be something that we fight to obtain and we fight to keep. When you let the thing God on credit, he will open doors and make ways. If you're thinking healthy thoughts, health is your portion in Jesus' name. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. We have to start serving God with our gifts, with our talents, with our time, with our treasure, understanding what really matters. Faithfully serve. Praise the Lord. Are you glad this morning? Give God another round of applause. Amen. 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 Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15 to 21. I got to go into the word. I got to go into the word. I'm short of time. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Therefore, Paul speaking, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened. I mean, verse 18. That the eyes of your understanding be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of your calling. I'm going ahead. I'm going ahead of let me, let me pause. Verse 18 now. Praise the Lord. We're going to verse 21. That as of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling. What are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? And what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he walked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in heavenly places. I'll walk with that. Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. We'll look at verses 5 through to 11. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant, and coming in the likeness of men, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself, and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of those in heaven, those on earth, and those under the earth, and that every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Somebody say amen. amen. The story behind the glory. Shall I say Easter, the story behind the glory. Let us pray. Father, we give you praise and thanks. Thank you for your anointing and your grace. Thank you for your love. Thank you, Lord, for all you're doing in our lives, for sustaining us to see yet another Easter not just by ourselves, but with family, with your people, in your house, 
We give you praise for all that you're doing and all, all you will do in us, with us, and through us. In Jesus' name, amen. I was born and raised Muslim. And so when I came to the faith some 37 years ago, the emphasis that Christians seem to put on Jesus confused me. Because, you know, we were taught about Jesus in, in the Muslim faith, but we're taught he was just a good man, God's messenger, you know, uh, 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 God's teacher. And that was all we knew. So now when I came into Christianity and it was all about Jesus, I'm like, why, why, why is it just Jesus? Why all Jesus, Jesus, Jesus? What about God? What about the Father? What about Jesus? And as I began to walk with God and learn, I began to understand that there is a difference between the pre-Easter Jesus and the post-Easter Jesus. And that's what the believer must understand. You must know that when Jesus walked the dusty roads of Galilee, Easter had not occurred. So yes, he was a rabbi. Yes, he was the son of God. Yes, he did many miracles. But that was all before his exaltation. His exaltation as he is today. And so in order for us to really, really understand, we must visit the truth of scripture as we try to decipher what this Easter thing is really all about. In order for us to do that, let us visit some scriptures we read in our text. Let's pick it up from Ephesians chapter 1, from verse 19. Paul was praying. And we all have to learn from this Pauline prayer. Because usually, for some of us, when we pray, we pray that God will help me pay my bills. We pray that God will give me good health. We pray. And there's nothing wrong with those kind of prayers. But Paul shows us a kind of prayer that is much deeper, much more meaningful, and, and, and much richer. He said, I'm praying that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, that the eyes of your understanding may be enlightened, that you may know the hope of his calling, Paul said, and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints Many times we talk about, and rightfully so, our inheritance in him. But Paul is letting us know that not only do we have an inheritance in God, we are also God's inheritance. Can you say amen? amen. That we will know how valuable, how important, how crucial we are to God and his agenda. That we mean the world to him. Most important on God's heart is you. The scripture said you are the apple of his eyes. Oh God, the apple of his eyes. If God had a wallet, your picture would be on it. Your frame will be visibly shown in it. He loves you intentionally, passionately, completely. You unconditionally. Yes, he does. So Paul is praying, is praying that the eyes of understanding be enlightened and we may know the hope of his calling and the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Then he goes on to describe some things in here in this verse 19 that I want, I just want to take some time to explain to us so that we could really grasp what we're talking about. Now you know the Bible was written in Greek. Many times when translations are done, Meanings are lost. How many of us speak multiple languages? You know what I'm talking about. So many times, in order for us to understand what was really said, what was really preached, we have to go back to the original. It starts up by saying, let this mindset or this mentality or this way of thinking be in you, which was also in Christ. One translation says, in your relationships with each other, relate with this mentality like Christ did. He ex went on to explain what Christ did, who being in the form of God, did not consider robbery to be equal with God. He did not hold on to being God. <clears throat> but made himself of no reputation. Jesus coming as a man, God, 
coming as a man was him reducing himself to his lowest possible form. For indeed great is the mystery of godliness. Can you imagine the God of heaven reduces himself to an embryo? Wrapped in the womb of a virgin and grew like you and I from cells and molecules all the way to the full embryo till he was birthed. And the Bible says they wrapped him in swaddling clothes and they found no room for him in the inn. I'm not surprised. For how can they find a room to contain him for? What can contain God? God of heaven and earth reduced himself to the body of a baby. Of a baby. When he was born and he opened his eyes and he saw the stars, he said to himself, I know I made you all. Good God Almighty. The God who, who allowed himself, he chose, please, do not, do not, do not confuse meekness with weakness. Weakness is the absence of strength. Meekness is control strength. A choice. That's what he did. He, God, Paul lets us know he emptied himself of every reputation. And he came in the form of a man, wrapped in the womb of a virgin, grew up like you and I, like a toddler and teenager. Until the time, the Bible says he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. All a choice. If he wanted to, he could have made the Roman soldiers that nailed him to the cross to be, st to be stillborns in their mother's belly. If he wanted the, the tree that they will use to nail and crucify him, he could have made, he could have made an earthquake would have consumed it all. This God Almighty. Everything he did, he did by choice, by humility. And God said, learn from what he did. That in life, if you want me to exalt you, we'll look at that in a minute, you humble yourself. Because your God humbled himself. And then he hits us with verse 9. Therefore, that means as a result of his humility and his obedience, God has highly, somebody say highly, not just exalted, highly exalted him and given him a name. This was, this was where I really now got it. This was when I got it. Giving him a name which is above every name. Please, please, please do not confuse name in the Bible with name now. Because name now has to do with identification. Praise the Lord has to do with nomenclature. In fact, there are people now that are called Jesus. Jesus is Spanish for Jesus. Praise the Lord. Are we going to equate them with the Lord? No, 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 no. The word name here is the Greek word onoma. It means authority, character, and honor. God gave him authority. God gave him honor that is above every other authority. Don't miss that. Don't miss that. This is what happened at Easter. God gave him authority. Now watch this. That are the authority of Jesus. Every knee shall bow. Now the knee is that part of the body that indicates being in submission. When the knee is standing, the man is in authority. When the knee bows, the man is under submission. Now, he says every knee should bow. The word shul here in the original Greek is actually must. You know, we talked about Jesus' humility being a choice. This knee bowing is not a choice. The knee must bow either by choice or by force. Uh. Somebody say every knee, every knee, every knee, every knee, every knee. The knee of cancer, the knee of depression, the knee of high blood pressure, the knee of failure, the knee of mental turmoil, the knee, the knee of sickness and disease. Every knee. Somebody say every knee. every knee. 
every knee must bow. Now watch this. Watch this. You know one of the reasons why God sent the second Adam that we know as Jesus was because the first Adam lost the authority that God gave. You know that. That when God created Adam, put him in the finished work and gave him authority, dominion, the scriptural word for it, over everything on earth. You remember that? The life is not supposed to be how we met it. It was supposed to be like that. You know, oh, why do things why are things the way that because they were not supposed to be like that? They became like that because of Adam's disobedience. Because Adam lost the authority that God gave him over the earth domain. When we talk about dominion, we have to talk about domain. Because dominion is authority that is bounded by jurisdiction. That jurisdiction is called domain. So Adam's domain was the earth. No wonder he named every animal out of his head without any computer. Think about that. No AI. No PC. All out of his head. He named it. And to this day, we call them what he called them. Because God gave him dominion. That dominion was lost to the devil when he disobeyed God. And God was too much in love with man, you and I, for us to be under the, for us to live in a world where our rightful dominion was now in the hands of the devil. So he sent the second Adam. And by Easter, the, the second Adam got back the dominion for you and I, that the first Adam lost. Now watch this. The first Adam's domain was limited to the earth. But when the second Adam was raised, God said, I give you dominion, not just the earth now, not just on the earth now, but in heaven and on earth, in every sphere of, of existence. The name of Jesus is supreme. Say amen, somebody. Adam could only have dominion on the earth. Jesus' name, whether it's the earth, whether it's on heaven, whether it's, whether it's under the earth, because that's how God works. That's what happened with Job. When Job went through his calamity and God brought restoration, God had to give him double for his trouble. God will never restore you to where you were. I'm not sure who I'm talking to this morning. Maybe as you listen to this message, the Spirit of God is just exploding it in your heart to let you know restoration is coming. But I want to let you, I want to warn you when restoration comes, it will never be where you were before. Because if it is to where you were before, it will be a waste of your time and God's time. God is going to lift you higher than you ever thought of before. In the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of those in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. And that every tongue should confess. Told you that word should is must. Every tongue must confess. Any tongue that's not confessing now will confess sometime. Must confess. There was a time I didn't confess. I'm confessing now. That's why I'm not perturbed by anybody not confessing before I was where you were. Say amen, somebody. I mean, it's always, it's always interesting to me, those who try to tell me how much fun they were in club. I was in the club. If I was having so much fun, I wouldn't have come out. <laughs> so you're trying to tell me. I didn't grow up born again. I've not always been a preacher. Been there, done that. It's you that need to come where I am to know what real living is. Say amen, somebody. Every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. Jesus Christ is, oh God, I wish I had time. Jesus Christ is Lord, Lord, Lord. We don't understand Lord in this, our westernized, uh, 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 Europeanized, in fact, Americanized contemporary culture. We don't. We have constitution. We have republic. We have Congress and judiciary and, 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 and uh, uh, legislative judiciary and executive. Because our founding fathers felt it was, it was, it was, it was not wise to put too much power in, in just one man. So they separated it. 
But that was not how he was before. The Lord, the king, had all the power. What, you, what, what judiciary? Is, what, what congress? Congress voting on what the king said. What congress? This is what he's trying to tell us. Jesus Christ is Lord. He's Lord. He's Lord. He's Lord. He's the Lord. <sighs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now let's go to Ephesians chapter 1, verses 21 to 23. Don't miss this. Ephesians 1. I was talking about God exalting him far above all principality and power and might and dominion. Watch this and every name. Well, we explained that name means authority. Every authority that is named. Every authority that is authoritized. Hey, Amen. As I shall dream and I shall show to blessed ashes. Now, can you imagine? I want to introduce one of them to you. I want to introduce Asher to you. And I say, meet the head of Asher Shoy and the body of Asher Jim. You think I'm crazy, won't you? You have to pray for me, like maybe a little more than Paul prayed. Because that makes no sense. Because the head, Asher Shoy's head and Asher Shoy's body is one unit. If Ashashoi uses his body, his hand, to sign a document, we say that that document was signed not by Ashashoi's hand, but by Ashashoi. And all of him will be held responsible. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Because the name of the head is the name of the body. The authority of the head is the authority of... Are you following me? The, the honor of the head. Oh God, who am I talking to? Is the honor of the body. So when Jesus, thank you guys, thank you. When Jesus was raised from the dead, he wasn't just raising him, he was raising you because you are. This is what Easter is really, really about. That's why you must shout and dance and rejoice. Because you're no longer helpless or defenseless. Available to you now is resurrection power. Now any situation you may be facing is just Friday, but Sunday is coming. And the same God who raised him has raised you with him. That everything and anything that life may have thrown your way, God is bringing you on top. God is bringing you ahead. God is bringing you victorious. So that's why you cannot quit. Let me tell you something about that. I got to close. I gotta close. <laughs> Satan can sense people of destiny in their infancy. He can. Some of you right now, the enemy is fighting you, not because of where you are, but because of where he's seen God is taking you. <laughs> the Bible says we are not ignorant of the wiles of the devil. So the devil is not stupid, he's a crafty devil. He knows he cannot stop where God is taking you. So you know what he does? He tries to kill you on Friday before you see Sunday. That's why he tried to kill Moses in his infancy. That's why he tried to kill Jesus in his infancy. That's why he's trying to kill you in your infancy. And you have to tell the devil like, 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 like Jacob did. The Bible says Jacob told them, said, wait back, I'm not done. I got to bless my children. I know death is inevitable, but dying before my time is a curse. At the right time, I'm going to go. But now, I got places to go, people to see, things to do. Back up, back up, back up. That's what you got to tell that devil. Because he wants to stop you from seeing Sunday. Something has to, something has to, has to dip down in your spirit. Something has to let you know. Why, why is the devil fighting me so much? I'll tell you why. It's because of your destiny. It's because of your future. It's because of your greatness. It's because of your resurrection. It's because of Sunday morning. It's because of Easter. 
for some of us, we have resigned. We have committed suicide. Not physically, but in reality. Giving up on our dreams, giving up on our goals, because we feel it's so tired, because we've been through Friday crucifixion, and it's so tough, and we're just existing. We've stopped living. And God said, this Easter, just as he raised Lazarus from the dead, every dream, every, every, every prayer, everything God has put in your heart, God is resurrecting it to the praise and glory of your name, of his name, to the praise and glory of his name. This is what Easter is all about. You've almost just resigned. Because it's become so tough. Because crucifixion is so hard. I get it. The disciples thought it was over. All of them disappeared. But Sunday is coming. And on Sunday morning, he rose with all power in his hand. And that same God who rose him, he will raise you. Not just you, your dreams and your visions and, and the things that God has spoken unto you. And, and what, he has, what he has designed for you to be, what he has designed for you to do, where he has designed for you to go. God will lift you to where you belong. May God lift you to where you belong. Like he lifted him to where he belonged. May he lift you to where you belong. Bow down your heads with me and begin to talk to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Begin to talk to the Lord. For some of us, it's broken relationships. And God is a restorer. He's a resurrector. He didn't just raise Jesus. He raised him with you and I. He raised us. And he just needs us to know that. So we don't, we don't kill ourselves. We don't use our own will and choice and decision to kill ourselves on Friday or Saturday. And we understand that Sunday is coming. Sunday is coming. We are so thankful for the opportunity to come into your homes or your office or wherever it is you're viewing this broadcast from. It's an opportunity that we are so eternally grateful for. Thank you for allowing us to come to you. Now, if you don't know Jesus, I want to pray with you. It's a simple prayer and it will come into your heart. You can just look at me, repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart, come and be my savior. I receive you as my Lord. If you're praying that prayer for the first time, kindly call our church office. We will love to pray with you. We'll love to get you information to help you be discipled and understand the full implications of what you prayed and guide you into helping you to fully stand in the knowledge and the fullness of what you prayed for. If this message has been a blessing to you, you have the opportunity as well as the responsibility to help making it come so that we can keep bringing more word from the Lord. Uh, you can get the full sermon, the full message in its entirety on our social media address page, on our YouTube page. It's there at the bottom of your screen. And while there, be kind to like, subscribe and share and i want to say if you're ever in the houston area we will be so glad to welcome you at grace international for one of our scintillating services we look forward to seeing you please remember these words from romans chapter 5 verse 17 the b part said those who have received the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness shall rule and reign in christ jesus we love you so much we love God you God bless you Hallelujah. Yeah.